Join Luke on his journey to become a soil health superhero. Whoa, look at this. There's two different colors of sand. Hi, Luke. Oh, hey there. What are you looking at? I'm looking at this different colored sand right here. This seems like there's a line right here. I'm just wondering what caused this. Well, that's quite interesting. Right now we are in the Santa Fe River and when floods happen, uh, the water sorts the soil according to where it is located on the plain. All we need is the PVC pipe with the measurements on it and a piece of plastic provided in your kit, the data sheet also provided in the kit, something to pound the PVC pipe into the dirt with, and some water. It's that simple. You got to go all the way down to the line. Yep. Okay, and stop. I remember this. So we tap the sand on the sides down, but leave the stuff in the middle alone. Got to make sure the rim is level. All right. Okay, now we put our plastic over top and pour the water in all the way to the top. All right. Timer ready. Okay. Then we set the timer, remove the plastic and let the water seep in and time how long it takes the water to drain into the dirt. All right. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Whoa, whoa. And stop. Wow, that was fast. I got 7.2 seconds. I'll write that down on my data sheet. That was so fast, we had barely t enough time to measure the halfway point. Wow, that infiltrated really fast. I wonder if it's any different on some old farmland. Well, I think you will find, Luke, that it is. So here we are in an alluvial fan formed by erosion from these hillsides over here, depositing soil down below, which is why we find more vegetation because of its fertility. Let's test it. Okay, right. I've already got the water in. Let me get out my stopwatch. I should put a little more water in. Okay, and ready when you are. I am ready. As you can see, it's going much slower. I see that. So okay. keep an eye on your stopwatch, Luke. It looks like it just hit the quarter inch mark. We're at 50 seconds. Excellent. Wow, that water took eight minutes, 40 seconds to infiltrate the ground. Wow, that's a lot longer. This was a farm many years ago. It was full of cows which compacted the soil. Oh, I see, and that's why the water took so long to infiltrate here and so short to infiltrate in the river. Wow, check it out. Look at all of this erosion right here. Yes, if you look over here, you'll see that only a little bit of water is eroding here. We call this a rill. But over here, a lot more water is flowing. We call this a gully. Let's try it here on this bare soil. Great idea. Looks like it's at about 33 degrees centigrade. Got it. Well, let's see what the temperature would be like if we put it on bare asphalt. All right, let's try it. What did you say it was before? It was, it was 35? At, started at about 30 degrees centigrade. Looks like it's at about 37 now. Got it. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, it sure was. Now let's look at a more well-managed landscape at the Santa Fe Community Farm. All right, let's go. Wow, it's so much more lush and green here. So here we are at Santa Fe Community Farm. You'll notice what a different landscape it is. Lots of grass and fruit trees, alluvial soil, and a very well-managed farm. Absolutely. Let's take a test. It seems like the water here is infiltrating a little slower than the river as well. Oh, absolutely. But faster than the, at that old farm field. Yeah, I, I see all these ants as well, and I, I bet they're making holes in the ground as well. I also had an ant farm, and I remember the complex chambers and tunnels that they made. They do work very hard. 
All right, so now that all the water's dried up, my stopwatch says six minutes, 35 seconds. Here I have a thermometer, which you will find in your kit. We are going to take temperature readings at the control plot where you just watch and the treatment plot where you actively improve the soil health. So I'm going to take my thermometer, which is measured in degrees centigrade, not Fahrenheit. We'll place it on the ground like so. We'll wait for it to stabilize. Looking at the little red line. Looks like it's at about 30 degrees centigrade right now. That's very observant of you, Lucas. <laughs> we'll take the temperature reading and make a notation of where we took the temperature. As we observe, we need to see whether it's going down or whether it's going up. So we'll take two measurements. The temperature when we first set it down and the temperature that we get after it is stabilized and it is no longer moving. It often takes at least a minute, but sometimes up to five minutes. Hey, what's it measuring now? <clears throat> Looks like it's at about 29 degrees centigrade now. It's gone down since we've set it down. It's amazing how brilliant you are, Lucas. I think it may have stabilized because it hasn't moved from 29, so we can take that measurement. So why don't you go ahead and write down the measurement. All right, will do. I'll write down 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah, it's 29 degrees centigrade. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, if it was 29 degrees Fahrenheit, we'd be in freezing temperatures right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the Santa Fe Community Farm is such a beautiful and lush place. We should find someone to give us a tour around here. Sounds good. Oh look, there's a family over there. Let's go over there. Let's introduce ourselves and learn from them. All right. Oh. Hi. Hey guys, <laughs> wasn't expecting you. How's it going? It's going great. What are you doing? Well, we were just doing a little soil science today. Hmm. By the way, did you know that this is called purslane and you can eat it? It's verdolagas in Spanish. It's delicious. Hmm. It's very good. Thank you. You betcha. And nutritious. Yeah, <laughs> so nutritious. Yeah, I want a little more. So right. we were just doing a little bit of soil science. Did you know that you can make a test plot with a little hoop? You could use a hula hoop or a string. We just have some wire here to make a little circular plot. And we were checking out what kind of activity was going on in the soil here. So the first thing we like to check out is how much of our soil is bare or covered. That might sound, sound kind of obvious, but it's really important when we're looking at soil health. This hoop has a 94 inch circumference and we've already calculated that the average hand size is about 6% of the area in here. So we can go through with our hands really gently and see, we can go, if you know how to add by sixes, Jasper? With a plot like this, it might actually be quicker to add what's covered, right? So we have something happening here, something that's not quite making it over here, that's much less than six. I'd say that's maybe about 2%. And again, sort of the tip of the thumb is about 1% in a circle of this circumference. So we can go maybe two here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would say we're about 8% covered and about 92% there. Then the next thing we like to look for is what we call litter. Now litter is usually a bad thing like trash, but in this case, we're actually talking about the building block for the organic content in the soil. So little things like this stem, it's, right, it's not plastic, it's not actual trash litter, but it's a bit of natural litter. And this stuff breaks down over time, building more organic matter in the soil. And we actually want that in our soil. Would it fit under one hand? then it would be about 6%. Or if it fits under two hands, it would be about 12%. Two. You think it's about 2% litter? I think that's fair. Maybe somewhere between two and six. If we were to pile all of these things together, I bet it would be in those single digits. So we're just kind of trying to make an estimation here. And then the next thing we like to, to check on is porosity. You know what pores are? We have them in our skin in our face where um, you can see it's like a little well. So we want to look at this soil and see are there little wells, are there little gaps, or is it kind of sealed off and smooth like it's made of clay or ceramics? What do you think? Does this have a lot of little wells and holes or is it super smooth? Little wells and holes. It's a secret. But there are a lot of little wells and open pores. So that means that this can absorb water really easily, which is what we want. 
because we want that water to get into the roots of this little squash plant so that it can grow. How many grass species are here? Uh, in this plot, this is, our, this is our farmland, so we work pretty hard to keep the soil prepped and ready for vegetables. There aren't really any grass species here. Think of the, the thin, narrow spears. There is another category of plants showing up called forbs. Forbs have a broader leaf, like this one you see here. This is actually a pernicious weed called bindweed. Um, this is another, this is all probably the same root system of bindweed here and here. It has a crazy web underground. So here's the little squash plant that we planted, as well as this purslane that we were snacking on earlier. So how many shrubs or trees are here? That's a good question. Again, since this is where we plant vegetables, We've cleared most of the shrubs and trees from this area. A shrub or a tree usually has a woody stem. And so here, it looks like a woody stem from a different shrub blew in, but these aren't planted here. And so I would go with zero species. All right, I will write that down. Excellent. Is there any moss, lichen, or mushrooms here? That's a good question. Do you know what some of the characteristics that moss, lichen, and mushrooms like to grow in? No. They tend to like really damp locations and also a lot of shade. So we do have them in different places around the farm, but especially here where it's a, um, a clear field without shade is not conducive to those species. Uh, so we'll look for those in our second test plot. Okay. Are there any insects, spiders, or worms, or other animals here? Let's see, can you guys help me? Do you see any? Jasper is like an expert insect finder. I think I see a little oh, spider or insect right there. Right. Oh, look at that. It's zooming I along. Another one over there. And you see another one over there. Nice. So that's two. Two to record so far. And I see a third. Oh, you see a third? Three there? Yep, four. Okay. Five. See, when we pause for a minute, we can really notice a lot. Six. Six. Seven, eight. Nice. And I'd be curious, I don't want to How many different types? Two d oh, I did. Like I just found a little wormy worm. What would you say, was that six types? Or was were some of them the same type? What did you observe? Probably two. So let's do the first one, uh, bare soil. Let's see, so we were using our hand and saying that's about 6% in this 94 inch circumference circle. Uh, let's see, I mean there's a little bit bare over here. I would say it's not quite my whole hand, maybe 3% there, 3% here. But really a lot, like I'd say this is, you know, maybe 6 or 8% bare. So 92, 94% covered. All right, I'll write that down. Really different than our last plot. It's nice to compare a couple of different sites. Uh -huh. Important in science to do different samples. It's a little hard to see here, but is there any litter? That's a good question. Remember, litter doesn't mean trash in this case. It's just kind of pieces of nature. I think you can see some sort of litter forming where we've got grasses dying. We've got some little yellow leaves in here. And I don't know if we have any in the plot, but here right next to the plot, we're actually under a little pear tree. So we've got some little pears and they're outside the plot. So we're not going to, um, we're not going to count them. But I'd say I'm seeing, you know, some dried leaves, some dried grasses, and you know, maybe a two or 3% litter. All right. Okay. So the next category is soil pores. Great. That was the idea of, are there little wells in the, in the soil that water could soak into like a sponge? Or is it capped off and shiny like, like clay or like your windshield? What do you think? Wells. Wells. Pretty porous. I would agree with that. All right. And just by feeling it, it's kind of cool and damp down there. I can tell it's really absorbing some moisture. So how many grass species do we have here? That's a good question. There's certainly a lot of grass. How many species, though, is a good question. I'd say I'm seeing mostly one. Do you see other types? I guess there's a clover in here that we'd call that a forb since it's got the broad leaves. I might call it one species of grass. Okay. And just lots of that one type. How many forbs are there? That's a good question. Speaking of forbs, there's a few. This little one is called lamb's quarters. It's actually an edible weed as well. 
kind of a wild spinach, Kelitas in Spanish, yep. And let's see, we had our clover, so that's a second species of forb. Um, and then here's another broadleaf. So I'd say we've got uh, three, the, okay. the Kelitas, the clover, um, and this little fellow. How many shrubs or trees are there? Well, these are actually, they don't look like it yet, but these are actually baby elm trees. Oh, so, okay. Um, there's at least one species of, of woody, woody shrub or tree. There's a few elms. I don't see anything else woody, do you? No. no. Okay. One thing that's easy to forget, since we're looking down at the soil, is that we can actually look up above our circle and we see that the canopy of this pear tree, which is a woody, woody tree or shrub, is right above us. So that is impacting our soil health too. So you can make a note that there's actually a second. It's just in the canopy and not in the, um, in the soil of the test plot. Okay. Is there any moss, lichen, or mushrooms here? Well, let's take a look. This is a great environment for it. This, this long grass makes shade and it feels moist. Um, I haven't spied any yet. Do you see any over there, Mateo? No. no. As it cools down in the season, later in the fall, especially with this decaying fruit in this area, I suspect we'll find a lot. But right now I'm not seeing any, so I think you can go ahead and record a zero for that okay. category. Are there any insects, spiders, worms, or any other animals here? There's one ladybug. Oh, there was one fly. There's an, yeah, there's, I, I there's a fly on me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What else do we find? So I think that it, that keeps us at three. A ladybug, fly, and mosquito for species. And of course, ladybugs are one of the most beneficial insects we can have around because they actually eat aphids, which are, which are a detrimental insect. So having different biodiversity of different species of insects, different species of grasses and forbs and trees, helps keep everything in balance. Wow, that's interesting. What else should I know about this area? Well, that's a good question. We're in an old orchard. The trees around us are about 80 years old. So we've been trying to take good care of that history and take good care of the soil by, uh, we've been just overseeding with, um, with different grass species and clover to, because previously this was a lot of bare soil. Um, and then making sure we have good biodiversity in the canopy and here in the understory so that the soil is healthy and vibrant. Well, thank you guys so much for showing me this area today. You bet. Thanks for coming down. It's been fun doing some soil science with you. Boy, that was a fun surprise. Doing all that soil science with Luke just reminds me of the time when I was out in Las Vegas, New Mexico, studying the pH of soil with Carlos and his kids. Soil health is surely amazing. Hello everybody, this is Carlos Herrera again with River Source, uh, here to teach you guys a little bit about pH in soil. Okay, as we're here to venture on the journey that you guys have been on with Luke and Scott as they are working in the soil curriculum that we are providing you guys an opportunity in order to do from home as we are all practicing distance learning. Just like my kids, a lot of you guys are studying science from your own home. Okay, so what we're going to do is collect soil samples from two locations in our yard. And Raylan's going to col collect a scoop of soil from underneath this log. Just one scoop is good, Ray. There you go. I wonder if he's ready to meet William Me, the soil health master of Agua Fria. I think he's ready to know the secrets of soil health that will help this world recover. I'm gonna become a soil health superhero, Mr. Shooker. You watch me. I feel, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel a rumbling inside of me. Wait, are you, what's going uh, on? Are you okay? I feel, I, I feel like I'm ready. 
I guess I am becoming a superhero. In the circle, beyond 